Coming up on Mouse News this morning, state and local leaders come together to celebrate the progress of a brand new high school being built in our region. And Kentucky 4-H teams up with a nonprofit chain to spark the imagination of teenagers with the art of upcycling. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you. It is almost 5 o'clock and it's Wednesday. Wow, the middle of the work week. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at that forecast this morning. And Brandon, I cannot believe you made it cold outside this morning. <laughs> Yeah, it was me. Yeah, it was. I just turned it down for everybody. It's you. Hi, you're the problem. That's it's right. you. Exactly. <laughs> I'm the anti-hero over here. Yeah, so no, I did not do this. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, again, we were spoiled. We were. We were spoiled. Mm -hmm. We thought, okay, we're, we're coasting right through. It's been record-breaking temperatures. And it was like, nope. Nope. Take it back to winter. <laughs> and that's what's going on this morning. And we're not out of winter yet, even though meteorological spring started on March the 1st. Not seasonal spring until the 20th. All right, let's get into the forecast this morning. And yes, 20s and 30s are the name of the game out there. Mostly 30s, but you see 27 and Grundy, I believe, is the cold spot. I'm scanning the map here just to make sure. Yep, and then 28 Clintwood, 28 Logan. Everybody else is in the 30s except for Monticello. They're the hot spot this morning at 41. Those temperatures will continue to come down, though, as we head deeper today. Look at these differences from yesterday. 20 plus degrees colder in many locations. And look at Logan and Jonesville, almost 30 degrees colder than it was 24 hours ago. So grab your coffee. Grab you an extra cup if you need it, a little extra to max warming needed as we head through the forecast today. Now, we're going to start off clear to partly cloudy. Those clouds will increase later today, but it's going to be a frosty start to the day, so give yourself time to defrost those cars or scrape them off. Dakota? All right, Brennan, thank you. State and local leaders were in Paintsville on Tuesday to dig out a new space for education and innovation. They were breaking ground on the new high school and career center that will help mold the minds of tomorrow. Our buddy Forbes has more from Johnson County. Congratulations to Johnson Central High School on this new state-of-the-art facility. The Golden Eagles will soon have a new nest. This is a big dream. Uh, it's going to move this community forward in really special ways. The groundbreaking for the new Johnson Central High School and its career and technical center took place Tuesday. All right. All right. Kicking off the beginning of a groundbreaking change in the county. Now is the perfect time uh, to be renovating our career and technical programs, to get in the newest equipment, to bring in the newest career paths that are needed as we are creating more new jobs than ever before. The new building, which will replace the more than 50 year old school, will provide more space in a two story facility, complete with a double height cafeteria with outdoor dining, outdoor courtyard, innovative classroom spaces, and four wings of learning with media hubs. We cannot describe the excitement we have to be able to provide these opportunities in state-of-the-art facilities now, in, in classrooms and in labs to pre really prepare students for what they're going to be facing once they get out of school. Which officials consider to be a blueprint for success in the classroom and the career field. Being able to change, reimagine uh, these programs is going to give us an edge in bringing in even more jobs and creating the workforce that's needed to fill them. And though the construction is likely two years away. I'm a little bummed that I won't be here for it, but I'm really excited to see where the future generation of Golden Eagles can take their work. The community is excited. I think the culture of Johnson Central is doing the best no matter what you have. Um, and I, I think that having everything would just make us better. <laughs> to see dirt moving. In Johnson County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Well, phase one, the site development comes with around a $20 million price tag. And officials estimate a more than $100 million cost by the end of the project, but they say it is necessary investment. Kentucky 4-H has teamed up with Goodwill to spark the imagination of teenagers. Students in grades 8 through 12 have the opportunity to participate in the Goodwill Meets 4-H Challenge. This program gives students the opportunity to upcycle items from the Goodwill in exchange for various prizes. Breathitt County 4-H agent Ryan Spicer says he hopes this program will encourage students to become more sustainable. You know, our motto in 4-H is to make the best better. 
and you know we're we try to provide opportunities to our kids and our youth that we deal with uh, that they might not have anywhere else uh, and uh, so I, I really feel that uh, providing this uh, opportunity to them you know might spark the interest that they realize you know I really like uh, to uh, uh, to work with with clothes or design Although registration for the program is now closed, you can catch the finalists for the program on Goodwill Kentucky's social media pages. A CDC report from 2020 says in the United States, there was an average of around 61 dentists per 100,000 people. But in Kentucky, it was slightly lower with around 55 dentists per 100,000 people. Dentist Greg Baker with Primary Care Centers of Eastern Kentucky says keeping younger dentists in the area is not easy. Once they go off to school, they experience the uh, bigger cities, uh, that kind of lifestyle. It's kind of hard to get back to this area, especially if you have good opportunities. Well, Dr. Baker says primary care has been trying to hire a new dentist at their office for two to three years, saying right now it can take around three months to get an appointment or longer. Four of the 12 Republicans that want to be Kentucky's next governor participated in the first debate of the primary season last night. The debate was hosted by the Jefferson County Republican Party and aired by Spectrum News One. It featured Attorney General Daniel Cameron, Agriculture Commissioner Ryan Quarles, Auditor Mike Harmon, and Somerset Mayor Alan Keck. Former UN Ambassador Kelly Knight Craft declined to participate, but says she will do others closer to the May 16th election. The debate covered a variety of hot topics, including medical marijuana, abortion, gun violence, sports betting, and transgender youth. On many issues, the candidates agreed with each other. Kentucky Democratic Party Chair Coleman Eldridge said the clear winner of the debate was Governor Andy Bashir, who's running for re-election. He said, quote, we heard a lot of noise and not a lot of substance. Well, thank you so much for getting your Wednesday started with us here on Mountain News this morning. Coming up, a volcano in Hawaii finally calms down after erupting for two months. We'll have more on that in just a few minutes. And the forecast continuing to trend on the cooler side today, giving us a hard reminder that winter is not over yet. I'll have the latest in about three minutes.